Thank you, team. That was very nice cooperation indeed. It is truly an honor for all of us uh, to know a little bit, a drop of this infinite great possibility of being able to understand and at least take a step or a few steps forward and carry the flame, the torch, the burning torch that a great mind of the world. We were just lucky that he was to be born in India. He had declared in his talk lectures from Colombo to Almora, page number three, four, and five, that India is the Punya Bhumi. It is the holiest of the holy land. You know, as per Vastu Shastra, you're supposed to have to grow financially and with prosperity. You're supposed to have south of your house, land, property, with huge walls and constructions, building, mountains. And the north and the northeast is supposed to be lowest down. You're supposed to have water flowing down in the north northeast. And if you have studied a little bit of Vastu Shastra, and most of you must have done a little bit, you try to do the same thing to your home, to your place of work. Look at India. India's water is and south, southeast and southwest. And look at the highest mountain of the world is in the north and northeast. So what makes it? It's just the opposite of materialism, of the flowing of the money. And this is that spirituality. It attains the highest and the thousands and thousands of years of civilization is prospering in this. And a great soul was born. All souls are great. The same soul exists exactly in you and in me and in this little rostrum or this mic. The computer, the screen, the display, the mic, the lights, they all are playing different, different role, just like you and I are playing different, different role. We have different names. We have different body, different structure, different shape, different contents. But nowadays, what good is this mic or that light or this computer or the screen or the projector if there is no electricity? It is dead. The same way is we try to understand a little bit this infinitely great power of the mind from the great soul crystallized for you and me to understand the power within, power within you, power within me. How is it to go about? He had said very simply, education, education, education. And we are divinely blessed that you and I have been placed to work towards that fire, carry that flame, carry that torch. What is the way? There is certain understanding has to come. In. And towards that great understanding, notice from a little money that he was to ask from Mother Kali, as his guru told him, I will not ask for money. It is your requirement. You have to go and ask. He went in, but notice he did not, he could not, he didn't make an effort. Something happened to him. 
and this happening is what needs to happen to you and me and what is that he asked for instead of money he said give me renunciation give me detachment he asked for give me wisdom give me knowledge he asked for give me love love for everyone love for you he went three times every time he would come out he was asked by his guru did you ask and he looked dazed and he said i couldn't ask i forgot so what is this forgetting he forgot about this physical material world and the so called greedy demand of sustenance he said if you and i have been created and if you and i have been guided and we don't have the means but if you follow the guidance you shall have the means you will get the means where did it come from so right away please understand swami ji swami vivekananda these that awakening of the spirituality which is within you and me can easily experience him every moment of our life right now here this moment he is present but you have to be sensitive enough to realize that that sensitivity development is called consciousness and this consciousness is there in all of us but in a sleeping form we need to seek his blessings silently every moment not just once in the morning and at night and just seek please guide and you will find the absolute stunning presence of his voice the team who did the presentation did a very good presentation but who did the presentation it is not them it is the divine presence of the divine guidance which has gone through them we need to seek the power of that presence in everything that you do you need to seek their blessings swamiji and the great holy trinities and the great masters of all religion to bless us understand you don't mind this is the essence of paramahamsa ramakrishna with swami ji spread to all around with the holy mother as the mother figure you don't mind wearing a bengali sari or a punjabi kurti or a western suit or a very typical gujarati dress or a south indian you don't mind you don't mind eating idli dosa vada or kentucky fried chicken or very nice sarso ke saag and makki ki roti you don't mind you love to and you say this is punjabi food this is bengali food this is south indian you don't mind learning a few words of every language you say bengali language so sweet You say South Indian language so powerful. You say Punjabi language is real lakhmar. These are the various ways of eating, and you enjoy. You talking about it. You learn a little bit, and if you can speak a few words, and you feel very happy. Why can't we take religion as a language? Religion is the language of the soul. it can be spoken by many people in many ways in which you will some may want to do it like that some may want to do it like this some may want to do it like that how does it make a difference whether it's the clothes or the food or the style of living or a language is a word of expression a religion is a word of is the expression of the soul understanding vedanta 
understanding true education is not easy unless you are blessed. Seek help, help will come to you, pouringly. There was no way that we could have organized a place or even a monkey like me could have thought about coupling Vedanta with IB. Who has given that idea? I haven't. We are no one. But we got this message. I happened to get guided to read those areas and I happened to be guided to understand it. And you all have guided to begin to like, try to understand and begin to love it and see the changes happening to you. Dear and I need to become conscious. Call Chaitana, Chaitanya. Conventional religion, whether Hinduism or any other religion, most of us we try to pray to an idol, to a figure, to a statue, or to an object like a shivaling, or let's say the mountain, or the trees, or the river, or the oceans. It's not far away, it is okay. But Swami Vivekananda, he in the beginning is totally denounced all conventional religion. He said, those are dark person rituals. You believe in yourself. The God is in you. You believe in you. What did Buddha say? Greatest of the mankind, the same. And if you notice, most of the processes of the great minds of the world are talking about believing in yourself. You and I have to spread that word to the children that learn to focus, learn to concentrate, and you will find something is coming up from within. This Swami Vivekananda for six years, despite going to Mother Kali to ask, he fought against worshipping Mother Kali. And Paramahansa Ramakrishna used to tell him, why do you think she is just a stone or a statue? I talked to her, Swami Vivekananda, to his guru. You know what he told him? He says, yeah, when people start dreaming, when people go into hallucination, they think so. Meaning he's telling his guru, it's all fraud. And 1894, 1893, 11th of September, 1894, June. He was very tired, non-stop he was talking all over America, spreading the word of India. He is the one who brought India into the world map. You will be surprised, way, way after that, 1981, I was doing some special work in the United States. You will be surprised to hear one Indian masters from America, an Indian Bengali gentleman, he is telling me, I know about India. So I wasn't understanding. I said, meaning? He said, you believe in all these rituals and dogmas and all that? I was just wanting to hear, what's he trying to tell me? He said, I know. What do the Indians do? I said, what do they do? He had a very funny smile and he said, they sleep on bed of nails, isn't it? Can you imagine? He's an Indian. He used to visit India just to go to the forest and see Royal Bengal Tiger. This is an Indian's impression in America. And this is where Swami Vivekananda brought India into the forefront. He said, this gentleman is telling that they all don't wear clothes and they are living with snakes in the house. This is the impression of us, India. And there India came in to be not only a powerful spiritual center. Today, if you look 
around the world, particularly in the Western world, the top spiritual speakers, teachers, leaders are all Indians. This is the message he passed on to it. You need to seek his blessings so that you and I can understand Vedanta. You know, a little while ago, not long time, I, while in the morning meditation, and I prayed to him, I said, please reveal thy mystery to me. Let me know more about you. And from strangely somewhere I got connected to this part I was telling you, 1894 June, 23rd June. Some of his close disciples said, Swamiji, we have a place in Thousand Island, which is about two hours drive from New York, and through the lake and water, and you have to go down to an island. He said, you come, we have a small house there, you come and stay and rest. Twelve disciples who went with him, there were some ladies, some gentlemen. They went and lived there with him. He used to take their sessions every day, just like that, morning and evening and meditate. That was his resting. That is where his talks, when he came back, he was uh, so enthralled with his own power, he said, it is not I who was speaking. He met Sister Nivedita when he came back to India. Sister Nivedita asked him, How was your stay? He said, You all say Vivekananda speaks great. You should have attended the Thousand Island. I have never spoken in my life as well as that. The Nivedita smilingly said, worshipingly, Gurudev, you are great. He said, You think so? It is not I. It is the Mother Kali who was speaking to me. She said, What? But you don't believe in worshipping statues and Mother, Kali? How do you say that? He said, that is one secret shall die with me. And this talk was revealed to me through a connection after I prayed to him. On 3rd of July in 1894, he gave this talk that what is the power of the Divine Mother and the Divinity which is within you and me. It's a very powerful talk. It is available in our library. It is also available and called the Inspired Talks by Swami Vivekananda in that little booklet. So, seeking his permission, meek, he was asked, why did you renounce everything? He is mind is so powerful he said it is not my mind it is your mind too only thing you have to choose to how do you do that he said start renunciation giving up start giving up things not forcibly but lovingly and you will see something will happen to your mind some powers will come from where that's the power of the Supreme Consciousness will dawn upon you. Britannica, 33 volumes, bought for Velur Mat for the library. He was going through the papers. So one of his disciples said, Swamiji, it's so difficult to read this book in one's lifetime, isn't it? He said, why do you say so? He said, you can't remember all this and study, even reading them page to page in one's lifetime. He said, really, I finished ten volumes. You can open any one of them and ask me. That's the power in you and me too. And that's what Vivekananda is. How do you do that? We have spoken about it. I'll remind you. What we see, and the what sees are different. Known and the knower are different. Seen and the seer are different. They are the essence of Vedanta. So I is seeing, we are seeing all of you, are two different. 
This is different, yellow different. Go a little higher. The eye is seeing it, but where is it going? It is going to the mind, understanding his message. The mind is now becoming the seer, the eye is the seeing it. But mind is seeing it, go a little further one step up. Who is realizing that I need a speck? The mind is realizing it. I is not realizing it. Similarly, the mind is feeling happy, mind is getting the pain, mind is getting the suffering. Mind is feeling happy, mind is feeling joyful. But this feeling, how are you becoming aware? Where is that? Now here mind becomes the scene and your consciousness becomes the seer. And all yours in my journey is what the presentation declared and the message of the Vivekananda is the journey of the humanity is to get connected to that consciousness which you are using unconsciously. You are using it like listening to me, watching me, hearing things, doing things. If you are not conscious, you suddenly say, Oh, I unconsciously did that. But you have to consciously do everything that you do. And you will find consciousness is pure. There is no impurity in the consciousness. Your mind does have. How does it have? The another name for your mind in Mandukya Upanishad is Shantam. Meaning, your mind is supposed to be peace is the name, peaceful. How is it then clobbered? It's because of our wrong work. Whatever work we do, if it is wrong, it will come and affect your mind and all your result of your work. So very simple principles, hold on to truth, which we keep talking about. Automatically you will find a purity will start to dawn upon you. Remove himsa, stop criticizing, stop being a fighter cop. Learn to accept, tolerance, compassion, very simple. Believe in your own self. I have the power, I have to discover that power. Most importantly, at all stages, think, how can I help you? You is who? Everybody outside of this. Everyone. And the moment you start helping people, you will suddenly see you will help yourself. So in this school's journey is to take these children, their parents, their teachers. Do not judge. It's very easy to judge them, very easy to label them. She is that type, he is that type. But difficult is to see the wealth, the power, the knowledge, even in that wicked character. And that's the journey of education. See the wealth in the children, wealth of the people, see the wealth in your partner. There's a lady came down yesterday and she wanted some help. Her husband is not working for a long, long, long time. And he's very demanding. And she's the one who's running the family. And he said, why did you come at 4.30? Your office gets up at 4 o'clock. You will be here by 4.10. She thinks, sir, how do I manage? How do I do this? What should I do? And she says, everything that he wants, I buy it for him. I give it to him. I'm looking after him. And yet he keeps on torturing me. I said, tell me something. Is he a good person or not? She, her eyes widened. She looked at me and... Yes, he is. I said, you keep seeing the goodness in him. Stop looking at this negativity. The second point, I said, you be that Shantam. You continue to serve. It doesn't mean become a doormat. You serve by seeing the divinity. If they do something wrong, sure. But discuss. Don't blame. Talk about it. 
and he just thought, if you follow these and follow that one principle of the sadhana practice, your world will change very soon. You will find the same person will start working and will come and tell you, I've become GM of so and so company. Would you like to do that? She said, naturally. I said, start doing, but I'm telling you, just watch. Now, this is the method and the path given by the ancient Vedanta, what Vivekananda talked about. And every other great master powers of the mind has spoken so. You awaken that within you. And that is what Vivekananda has spoken. Uttishtata, Chakrata, Chadaivati, Chadaivati. It means arise, awake, stop sleeping, wake up. And stop not till you reach your own goal. But to decide what is my goal. I pray for all of you every day morning, every day night, and I wish you good luck. <laughs>